All right, all right. Uh, Sam, back with you here. Uh, it's mid, mid-morning, mid December 6th. And uh, again, uh, per member's request, we're doing an update here on Stella Lumen. This is XLM to Bitcoin. This is a 60-minute on Bittrex. Now, this has been just a incredible trade for us. It, many, many members have really done quite well here. And I, I thought we'd just do a little bit of review and see if indeed there was more opportunity here. You know, the, the, this kind of price action is, you know, I mean, this is why we're in crypto, right? I mean, that's just, it's the kind of volatility that we're seeing in terms of percentage uh, movement is is really just remarkable. So, you know, the, right, so the, again, the, 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 I guess the point I'm trying to make here is, when you're in, coming into the market like this, we, we, we come in with the expectation that we know we're going to be stopped out more, more often than not, right? We're going to be wrong more than we're right. That's, that's the assumption you make day one when you decide that you're going to come into the market. I don't care how long you've been trading. I've been trading for over 20 years, and I, I, am, I, I promise you to this day, I am still wrong more than I'm right. The reason that I'm able to be successful is because I, I don't take a lot of risk because the 20 years of doing this has taught me how quickly the market can, can take your money, right? As, as I often say, the markets, they give reluctantly. They take without mercy. So you have to always maintain that, that, that maniacal focus on where do I get out? Where am I wrong? How, can I afford to take this much risk? Can, you know, the, 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 the new trader looks at how much they can make. The experienced trader looks at how much they can lose. And I, I just consistently want to reemphasize that to you because when you look at a trade like this where we've done just remarkably well, the, 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 the first thing to, to recognize is that trades like this, that move like this, that are this technical, that, that I, I mean, we, we couldn't script these any better. This, this, is, this is why you continue to pull the trigger in the market is because eventually it's a move like this that offsets all those small losers that you take, right? So that you end up coming out well ahead. It does not take many moves like this to offset the, the, the little losers as the, the analogy is I, that I always use, right? So it's take a jab, take a jab. I can take a jab. You're not going to knock me out with a jab. Do not put yourself in a position where you can get knocked out of the market or, or damaged so severely that realistically you're not coming back unless you're going to reload your account. Right? That, that's, that's, I, I just I don't know. It's not possible, possible for me to overemphasize that to you, which is why whenever I'm, I'm showing you something, it's always about where is the stop? Where are we wrong? Where do we get out? Right. It, so regardless of, of how good it may look when I first present it to you, the expectation is that you know, the market's going to do something that you're, you're not anticipating, that you're going to have to adjust. You may be relabeling. The count may be entirely wrong. You, you, you just have to prepare for th- that, that outcome. That way, if you are stopped out, well, one, you're not surprised because your assumption is, well, I'm, I know I'm going to be wrong more than I'm right. I, I, I know that, just to the nature of coming into this market. I'm going to be wrong more than I'm right. But when I am right, I'm going to maximize my returns. And this is just a great example of that. So enough preaching. Let, let's get down to it. So this is the this is the 60 minute. And you can see this just been just incredibly technical. So we've had, this is just great Elliott wave structure. So from our from our absolute low down here, we 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 went into a lead. Well, no, pardon me. We we had an impulsive one wave here. So we we get we get look how technical it is down here. And I think I did a video on this not too long ago. So here's our we we got. I won't take you through it all again. But we we get a very very clean impulsive one here. Then we get here's our two. Right then, then up we go. Now the largest degree here is in white. There's our one, two, big spike for the three. We come down for the four. And I'll open this up so you can see there's an ABC in there. We don't overlap the one, so good odds that we've got an impulsive move uh, uh, underway. We we draw the pitchfork right because we've got three dominant pivots. We actually we drew it back here, but now once we see this, we redraw it from the dominant pivots. If I pull from my low here, well. Let me open this up here. If I pull from my low, my too low, right? This is just the the rudimentary analysis, right? Where do we go? Right, I, you know, again, it's just I, I, I've lost track of how many times I've showed this to you. Right to the, now, 
listen, it doesn't hold every time, right? I showed you a trade yesterday in Dash where we were coming right to the box and it blew right through it. So just because it, it hits that doesn't mean that 100 out of 100 times you're going to see a reaction. It just that's just not reality, right? But the point is you can see, do you, do you understand that this is just like the Dash trade yesterday? You can trade that Right. This, regardless of whether you're right or wrong, you can trade that. So just that, just that right there is seven to one. And I'm not even to a first target. But look at look at the risk, right? You see how small that is? That, that's the, why I love buying. Just a, you, you have to front run a little bit ahead of the 618. Stop on the other side of the 65. Right? You, you, it's stunning, absolutely stunning. Well, it, sh it shouldn't be because it's what the algorithms are doing. They buy it in the box. They, oh, they'll often front run it at the 618 they'll reverse at the other side of the 65, which is why you so often see it go into the box. Because really what they're doing, they're running the stops of the people that had it just underneath the 618 that don't know that they used the 65. That, that's all that's, that's why you see it go into the box over and over and over again. The people that had their stops just under, on the other side of the 618 are like, God damn it. You know, they're, they're, they're cursing the market because they've been stopped out just under the 618 because they read in trading 101 somewhere that the, the 618 is where the market's going to pivot. Nope. Nope, they're going to take it right into that little box. And, of course, so the first thing you get here, in addition to that, what, what do we have there, right? You've seen it 100 times. We get the corner pocket trade. Now, look here. It doesn't make the median line here. It doesn't make it. So that's – what does that tell you, right? So not making the median line sets up the retracement. So we don't know at that point if, indeed, because we don't make the median line, we, we could be moving back down. Right, because that's that's trading principle. Uh, Andrew's median line trading principle number four: if a failure to make the median line sets up the potential for a retracement equal to or greater than the move that didn't get there. So you, you know you have to keep that in mind that potentially you were setting up there for that to be a failure, a failure swing. But get, looking at the Elliott count. We can look at this and say, well, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. We could just have failed to reach there. Now we're coming back to the outside edge here. So what do I have here to support a buying decision? Well, we've got our general bullish bias in crypto. We've got a perfect Elliott count. It's been technical all along the way. So before I make an assumption that, I don't, that I'm uncomfortable being a buyer there, I'm able to look at that and say, well, if I've got a 3-4, Good, re good, good chance that I've just put in, given the size of that 3-4. My expectation is that I'm going to subdivide in the fifth. So before I, I, I you know, don't take the trade, I'm going to draw up the retracements here, anticipating that my second is going to go anywhere from the 50 to the 618. And we stall, stall, stall. So there was lots of time to get on board in that trade. Lots of time to get on there because we didn't we didn't just rip from here and head down right the the support that you would anticipate holding holds that that's that's the tell so there was an easy opportunity to get in here and again getting in here with a re so th that would be your first there's the algo target on the small small one right so in there stop on the other side of the 65 see so tight 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 there's three little over 3 to 1 just on the first target Here's the next target. Here's the return to the median line. Well, actually, I guess we, we'd put it here, which is a trade that we took, right? So we took this trade and took first profit here when we hit the median line. Why? Well, one, or, so we had nice gain there. We had an expectation that we were going to tag the median line. So that was a reasonable spot to take a partial profit and then let some run, see what happens. And, you know, do we know that was happening? Of course not. But it, it shouldn't be terribly surprising giving the one, two, three, four, and then subdividing it into a one, two. At the very least, what are we looking for in the one, two? Well, we're looking for 100% of the length of one. Right? We got the algo target. We got the bigger algo targets here because that had not been met yet. Right? Do you follow me? So you always defer to the larger degree. So this swing low to high right into the 61865 box had not yet reached its target here of negative 23. It gets it right here. So here's just, just, just there's the median line. There's the algo target. We get a little reaction. But, it, you know, obviously it's, it's continued to go. There's the next target. There's the negative 618. Here's the negative 100, right? So let me pull that off so we can get a better look at it. So let's, with all of that off, now we can look at this and say, okay, well, when we based on what I'm seeing here, 
I can start measuring for where I would anticipate seeing some reaction for a fifth because I've got a one, two, three, four that I'm fairly confident in now. So I'm going to take my, well, let's see, I got to slide it over here so I can get the absolute start of it. So I got to take, there it is. So I got to take my length of my one from the absolute low back here to my one. I'm going to project from my four. Okay, so we've just gone, we, you know, here we wick it. Now we're slightly through it. That's 300% of the length of one. There's 3.618. So potentially, potentially, it looks like we're getting a little reaction here. And where do we head? Back down towards the median line. So potentially, we've got a, 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 a possible pivot here. But I would look at it relative to the other degrees here because we've got, we've got three, four. And then in our fifth, we've got one, two, one, two. You see that? So we're, we're, we're acknowledging that we may have a pivot here but we don't know if it's the absolute pivot. So all we do is now just move into the smaller degree and say, okay, well, what, what, what can we see here? I've got to open it up here. Well, if this is my one, two, and then I go in again, so why, why do I go one, two, one, two? Right, that, this is a good, good teachable moment right here. Okay, so the reason we have to do that is because we're, we're anticipating, <sighs> alarm going off, excuse that. Okay, so. The reason we have to do that is because if this one, two is going to lead us into an impulsive third wave, we can't have an overlap of the one wave. We can't, then, then we'd have to relabel it because we can't get a diagonal. If, the, if, if this is going to be one, two, and we're going to get an impulsive three, we can't, get, we can't have an overlap here, right? That would invalidate the count and it potentially could have been set to relabel. But the expectation was one, two into a third. I've got to have an impulsive structure in a third. Let me take that off. So knowing that I've got to have that impulsive structure, I can't have that one overlapped by the four. This would have, you know, this potentially we had three, four. That, that would not have worked. So I go there and I go, well, there, the depth of that retracement tells me that most likely I've just got another one, two. Right, that that's the tell that likely we've got a one two. So we get what do we do? Same thing we do every time. We we work from that low up to my high. Where where's our buy zone here? Right between the fifty and the six one eight. Okay, we come to the lower parallel, uh, to the median line. So a perfect technical buy for a one two. Right. So if you were if you were long off of this, right? There's another place to potentially add if you didn't add here. Right, because we also, if I recall from measuring this out previously, we had one, two, yeah, we did make it. So we had a potential third here because it had gone just beyond the 100% of the one. So it was possible that this could have been the third. But this, this was the tell. When we overlap the one, we can't have three, four, five in a third because then we've got a diagonal. Thus, the relabeling to one, two, and the, and the entry here, right? The entry here for a one, two, looking for the three, four, five of the third, right? So the, these are little tells. That's why, that's the advantage. You know, I, I've mentioned this many times before. That's the advantage of working with the Elliott wave structure because it gives you a rule set. And when you violate a rule, you, you, you can't go, oh, well, you know, I'll just, I'll let it slide this time. I, I guarantee you, you'll lose money doing that. You, you, if you stick, if you don't stick with a rule set, then you're just you're just improving, right? You might as well just flip a coin. There, there, there is no way for you to analyze that as any, anything other than a one-two once you overlap. That, assuming you're you're staying consistent with the Elliott methodology, that can't be a three-four. Can't be. So okay, if it can't be a three-four, what what can it be? Just in, within my rule set. Well, it, it can be a one, two. We just, if you watch the, the Bitcoin video today, we had to relabel that as a one, two. So it's not uncommon to get one, two, one, two, one, two. Well, now, so having done that, does that make sense with where we are now? Well, let's open it up. So if that's a one, two, right? So let me, let me pull some of this off. Okay, if that's a one, two, what are we expecting? We're expecting an impulsive three. So if I go from that low, which is the low of my one, to the low of my two, what's the most likely target for a third wave, right? Between the 618 and the 75. So it looks to me like we've subdivided and topped 
for that fifth, maybe, maybe we don't know, you know, we, we don't have enough data here to be conclusive about that, but it looks to me like we may have time. So here we get a couple of ticks from it. Look at the reaction we get right back to the median line. Is that technical? Well, let's check it. Let's check it. I can take that off because I've got the box drawn. So if I go from my two low to my three, here we come for the four. Here's my four. We're just a couple of ticks shy of the median line. There's the 50. Deep, deep for a deep for a fourth, but look here, just a few shy of the median line, and we don't overlap, giving me confidence that I've got a four here, because I don't overlap the one. Most common zone for a four between the 38 and the 50. All right, well, we push a little through it, trying to get to the median line. We don't get there. And then we have a little structural support. I would always draw that too, right, as potentially some support. But what am I really paying attention to is that one. Because I'm, I'm, again, assuming I'm in a third wave, an impulsive wave. I can't have the four overlap the one. That violates my rule set. Now, if it does do that, i got to relabel it. It can't be a three because it can't be a diagonal in a three. I could have been, could have been we're ending up in a, in a diagonal in a fifth, but per my primary count here, I'm in a third. Right? So we may well, may well be relabeling again if we're going to go up because where's the algo target here from this 50 right up here? We may be relabeling yet again. Look at the strength of the market here from coming down. So we've been, let me pull this off. We've been down a couple of times. One, two, could be we've just got done this. All right, so we've subdivided again. One, two, three, four could be going up for another five because there's the algo target right there. And there's the 50 that they're working from. So they're trying to get it there. That's their target. Here's the 50 median line. There's their target right there. Now, so remember, I'm always, I'm, I'm combining the way the algos move and then we're weaving the Elliott wave in around it because we can't, typical trader, myself included, we can't, we don't have the deep enough, we don't have pockets deep enough to just follow the algos all the time because where they're going to stop and reverse, we, we not, may not be able to afford that kind of risk. So what we're trying to do is weave the Elliott wave structure around what the algos are doing based on their, where their buyers and where they're taking profit. That, that, that's the point of combining the two. We can't, most people can't afford to do what an algo is going to do, or, right, backed by whomever. Can't, can't afford it. So we look to be, can we get, can we weave in around what they're doing on a larger degree and get a wave count where we can look for low risk entries around what they're doing. But the, the dominant trend comes from the algos and what they're doing. Buy the 50, res, reverse at the 65. That, that they do it over and over and over again. Doesn't matter what market is. C crypto, no different. Right? That's how they're written. And then they use they use the median lines again because a compute that that's, you you can imagine that that that's very doable for a computer program to be written to work from the most recent pivots. Right. So <laughs> that's that's what's happening here. So likely, likely we're in either a, we, we've either topped here the third. We're going to go up for the fifth. Well, where would we be and where would the next opportunity be if we're going to go up here to their target here and get that negative 23? Then then look what sets up here. There would be the four right of the smaller of the of the, that's one degree lower than the five. You see that? So then, then we look at this and we go, okay, it, well, if that were to be my four here at the 50, well, that, where's the buy zone? Right here, right? Between the 38 and the 50. And we, we would anticipate a move back towards the median line, right? Return to the mean, right? So here, see how critical that's been. Shy of it, hit it, hover around it, come back to it, come back to the median line. So if we're going to come back up here, and I, we, I, I'm not... I don't know that we will, but that would not surprise me because we've got a technical pivot up here, right? Off of that, that pri off of this pivot low here, off of the algo here. So we come back down. So there's a combination, right? So there's Elliott wave buying a fourth between the 38 and the 50 median line with an algo pull, right? Because they're going to buy it at the 50 and they're going to flip at the 65. But that would see that what would happen there. So here's the one. Right. If they flip there, then we, you know the, the top is in. So we we might end up doing this. We don't know yet. Don't have enough data right now. You know you trade it until it fails. You trade it until it fails. All I'm doing out here here now is laying out a potential roadmap. Right. Because if you didn't buy it here or here or here, that doesn't mean that you've missed the all the opportunity in in Lumen to Bitcoin. You haven't missed it. You just you, you're just not part of this run. But all we're doing here, I'm on a one hour chart. 
right? So eventually, eventually, okay, take note of this, right? This is why you never miss anything. There's always another trade coming. If indeed, let's, let's just for the sake of the hypothetical, say we, we top up here, right, at, that, at the algo target. Well, all we're going to do at that point is we're going to go to our absolute low where the entire impulsive move started. We're going to look for the retrace back to the 50. Right? That's the next opportunity because if that's, if that's going to be the top, and again, we don't know that it is, but if hypothetically, if we top up here, we've got a completed five wave structure. What are we looking for then? We're looking for the A, B, C to come back to the 50, where the algo is going to buy it. At the 50, interestingly, there's a prior resistance potentially offering some support, as well as a tendency for the market to move back to the prior range of the three to the four. Right? So again, we, I'm not saying we're going to top up here, but if we did, where's the next trade? Then we're looking for this. Yeah, we're looking for boom, boom, boom. Let me highlight it, put it in yellow. Let's go to the minor and show the wave, right? Do you see that? Now, that, that's what we're looking for. So maybe we get this outside edge back to the median line, but this is what we're looking for. Who, who, I mean, we don't know what that's going to look like, right? I'm just potential roadmap, potential roadmap back here. Up here, put A, B, C. That's the next buy opportunity. If you missed all of this, you just you just didn't get it yet. You just didn't get it yet, right? So completed five wave structure A, B, C. Why would I be buying at the 50? Because I'm looking for the two of the of the larger degree. Where's the two likely zone between the 50 and the 618? You see it? It's just the same pattern repeating over and over and over again. But, you, you know, again, you got to understand where we are and how to do this analysis so you can find the low risk entries. That's the whole point of it. Where can I get in the market with a small amount of risk relative to my potential upside? Knowing, right, we're right back to where I started, knowing you're going to be wrong more than you're right. So I lay that out and I go, wow, that all makes perfect sense. But the odds of that playing exactly that way... Slim, slim. But if it does, boy, am I, do I have an advantage because I know exactly where it's going next. That's why it's worth doing that work because all those times that you get stopped out, small, 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 small loser, the one time that you see it like we did here where it just played perfectly, 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 that compensates you very well for all those stops. All right, guys, I'll wrap it there.